Okay. Uh, well, we're definitely excited uh, to advance uh, to the championship game and represent the West. Tremendous opportunity for our football team. Um, like uh, I said after the game, I think uh, you know, our players work really hard. They have a dream in their, in their mind, and uh, we've been able to, to get to this point to uh, put ourselves in a position to compete against, uh, you know, if not the top team in the country, one of the top teams, uh, and they've proven it every week. So, of course, we have our hands full. Michigan's played uh, lights out this week. Uh, very well coached, uh, tremendous defense. I think uh, their front four plus basically their front seven will be the most talented team we played to date. They're big, they're stout, they ro rotate a lot of guys in, uh, good in the secondary. Uh, just statistically, one of the best defenses in the country. And on offense, you know, the running game, the tight ends, the O-line, and then now a really uh, athletic, dynamic quarterback who can make plays outside the pocket, um, you know, extend plays, uh, throw the football vertically. Um, you know, right now they're, they're the complete package. So we just got to, you know, get to work and practice well and, uh, you know, go out there and cut it loose come game, game night. Jeff, just, just speak to the opportunity you've got here as a program on Saturday night. Well, that's the exciting thing is uh, we put ourselves in a position um, for this opportunity uh, to represent the Big Ten West, to play in a championship game, to represent uh, this university um, and uh, this state, and go play, um, you know, at Lucas Oil uh, for a Big Ten championship. So, um, you know, we want to enjoy uh, the moment that we're in right now, but at the same time, you know, once we get back to practice, you know, we got to get back to practicing and uh, competing and uh, getting better. And um, the only way you're going to have a chance is if you prepare the proper way. And uh, as the week goes on, start to gain confidence and believe that, uh, you know, you can't achieve anything. And then, of course, game day, you know, we'll just have to go out there and cut it loose and leave it all in the field and just play as hard as we can. You feel like in the role of underdog, there's no pressure. You can kind of play free. Do you like – do you like that role? Well, yeah, there's going to be more pressure on Michigan, of course. Um, you know, they've got a chance to really do something special this year, uh, and they're in great position to do that. So uh, for us, you know, this is a, you know, a one-game shot to uh, play in a championship game and uh, roll the dice and see what we can do. Can you speak to this, the success you've had as a head coach against top three ranked teams. I think you're three and oh. Here you get another crack at a team ranked number two. Well, you know what, uh, when, you, when you play those type of teams, you have a little luck on your side. Uh, you've got to play um, your very best. A lot of things got to go your way. You know, I do think that we will prepare hard. I do think that uh, we will give it our best shot. I do think that uh, as coaches, we got to put in a plan that has a couple wrinkles uh, here and there that gives us an edge. Uh, we got to figure out, you know, maybe what has slightly hurt Michigan at times on both sides of the ball and see if we can do something to take advantage of it. But of course, it's going to come down to uh, being aggressive, uh, making plays, uh, executing, blocking, tackling, uh, and then having the ball bounce our way. And uh, of course, you know, on any given Saturday, you know, anything can happen. Knowing what we know about Aiden O'Connell's situation that he was dealing with on Saturday, was there ever the notion of him, him not even playing the game? And what do you think of the effort he gave given the, those circumstances? Well, things happen very uh, suddenly. Uh, so, yes, there was concern uh, about whether he would be available to play, and understandably. So we just wanted to support him uh, as he was going through that and uh, be there for him, um, answer any questions he had. I think uh, being around his teammates, uh, I think, did slightly help. Um, and then, of course, he had to manage all the emotions and the things that he was going through, which you know, you know, I can't imagine how, how hard it would be. So I, without question, I give I – give, uh, Aiden, a lot of credit. He uh, 
you know, did what he thought was best. Uh, he played his heart out for his teammates, and he gave us a great effort. So, uh, of course, he's got things he's got to deal with this week as well. Uh, yeah, but I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll be there to support him and, and whenever we can get him get him back here to get back to work, uh, we look forward to that. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, this is the first meeting uh, between Purdue and Michigan since your first year year here, uh, 2017. Can uh, can you recall at all just, you know, what it was like preparing for that game back then and I guess just, uh, just during your time here, what you've kind of improved upon as a coach, what you've learned about Purdue as a program, what you've kind of learned about the Big Ten to, to kind of set you up for the position you're in now. Well, I remember that game very vividly. I think that uh – you know, they're coming in with a stout defense once again. Uh, they weren't as dynamic on offense at the time. Uh, so we thought we, you know, if we could figure out a way to shut them down on offense and create a couple scores, we might have a chance. Uh, and I think we started to play with the trick play and, and picked up some yards and, and hung in there for a while. But then, then they pulled away at the end. Um, I think they've definitely uh, elevated their game the last two years and they're playing um, – you know, lights out right now. So for us, uh, you know, we just have tried to continue to get better. And I think uh, as you play the Big Ten, um, you've got to become a complete team to win. It doesn't matter what you can do on offense. Uh, you know, you have to play really good, sound defense. Um, you have to be stout. Uh, you've got to uh, be able to, you know, run the ball at, at certain times uh, at least and, and move the chains that way and get yards that way due to a lot of things, defensive structure, weather, uh, you, you name it. Um, and you've got to still have explosive plays and be able to score when you need to. And I just think that uh, – and, and also special teams, uh, you know, has to do their part. But I just think all three segments – uh, have to play well in order to win in this conference. There's a lot of parity. There's a lot of really good football players and good coaches. And um, we've tried to gradually, um, you know, help all three segments get better uh, so that we can perform and win football games. And then uh, you mentioned it already, but um, a little bit already, the, the Michigan running attack, um, Blake Corum, has been playing as well as any running back in the country. Um, he's been dealing with an injury, so I'm not sure, you know, of his status or – whatever for this uh, upcoming week. But um, they have a backup running back in Donovan Edwards that's played really well last week as well. Just what are the challenges for your defense in dealing for not one uh, great running back, but potentially two, and how they kind of compare to some of the running backs you've played this year? Well, I think both these running backs are two of the best in the country, and they've proven that uh, week in and week out. Uh, they've got a great offensive line. They play a bunch of tight ends. They get in running sets, and then you throw in an athletic quarterback. They can pull it at any point and run. Now you got to account for him. So that, that creates a lot of problems, um, and it will be very challenging for us. So, you know, we have to figure out a way to – uh, be physical at the point of attack, put enough guys in the box to, to be able to stop the run, but yet you can't, you know, uh, abandon uh, covering the pass because they took advantage of that uh, this past game against Ohio State and hit a lot of big plays. Uh, that was it. That's why they were able to score a lot of points. They had big plays uh, in the passing game. They had big plays in the running game. And we have to eliminate the big plays. I think if you watch Michigan's defense, uh, and we watched a lot this morning, <laughs> There's not many big plays there, uh, so they do a great job of not allowing the big play and making you earn it and work all the way down the field. And uh, you know, so that that's going to be a challenge for us. And then continuing on their defense, um, they've been among the best teams in the Big Ten in getting after the quarterback. But um, at the same time, your offensive line has done a good job of protecting Aiden this season. Um, and what in what aspects do you feel like your offensive line might have an edge there? And uh, and trying to give you guys an advantage there offensively? Well, uh, when you say edge, I don't know if, if, if that probably is a good word. I mean, they, they're very, very talented, the most talented defense we're faced to date, and definitely the most talented front four slash front seven. Uh, so we will have our hands full there. So we've got to be able to negate that in, in different ways. And uh, that's having a balance of mixture of, you know, getting it out quick, screen game, moving the pocket, um, you know, uh, running the ball different ways, um, you know, finding a way to throw it deep but protect long enough. But, yes, we can't allow the sacks and the negative plays and the interceptions, and that's going to be critical for us. Yeah, 
Yeah, <clears throat> going off the Michigan defense, um, obviously they're very good against the run. You guys have kind of used Devin Mockaby in those little swing routes um, out of the backfield. Are those kind of an extension of the run game for you guys? Is that how you look at it? Well, it, it, it probably is. I mean, we want to make sure, uh, and I thought we did a better job in the second half that, uh, you know, we, we at least uh, allow our playmakers the ability to touch the ball. So that, you know, of course, right now, Charlie has played outstanding, Payne Durham, Devin Mockenby, and then the others have been compliments off them. And we've got to use them all. Uh, so it's not like they need to get all the touches, but we definitely need to make sure that uh, we find a lot of ways to get the ball in their hands. And uh, that's the challenge is making sure that, uh, you know, those guys can touch it. Uh, and when they're covered and when we need to do something different, the other guys need to step up and make plays for us. So we're going to need all uh, everybody who's on the field available, uh, trying to get open, get yards. And, uh, but it is critical that we were strategic in, in how we do that. You guys have played in a lot of big games over the last few years, uh, but nothing to this level, Big Ten Championship in Lucas Oil. Uh, do you think this environment could impact the guys in any way? Well, I don't think so. I think we, we have played in a lot of big games, a lot of great crowds, a lot of great venues. Now, I, I will say this. I, I took my son to the Big Ten Championship game last year as a fan, um, and even I was shocked that every seat was taken, and it was loud. And I mean every seat was taken. I think I then took him to the national championship game with Georgia and Alabama, and it was louder and more crowded in the Big Ten championship game. Uh, so it will be a uh, tremendous environment. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun for our players and the teams, and it'll be a tremendous amount, a lot of fun for the fans, I think, to experience uh, you know, a game of that venue. So, of course, uh, you know, we'll just have to relax and cut it loose and, and let it all hang out. Now, a lot of these seniors in particular in 2019, 2020 seasons, you guys had a bit of a rough stretch. What does it say about them that they've been able to weather the storm and have great success over these last two years? Well, we've got a great group of guys. Uh, it's their football team. They've earned the ability to get to this game by uh, being able to handle adversity. And, uh, and that's what you got to do. I mean, every football team has to do it, so it's not just us. But, you know, we're going to have some ups and downs, and we're going to have um, – some gut checking moments every year. Just that's just that's just part of it. Uh, but I just think when that happens, um, the head coach, the assistant coaches, and the players got to maintain their belief, but understand, hey, these are the things we're going to have to tweak and figure out a way to get better at, and and then see if we can get that done the next week. And every week it's different. And uh, the thing is, even when you win, you you better be figuring out some things as well. Uh, because uh, you're not guaranteed to win the next week. So that's the challenge of this conference and what makes it great, uh, makes it great for us uh, is, you know, one week uh, you can be feeling good and the next week or two you can be feeling real low. And that's just part of the, the, the every year challenge during the season that, you know, we have to be able to handle and handle it in, in the best way we can with a workman attitude and, uh, you know, the ability to, you know, have constructive criticism and, and find ways to get better. Jeff, you talked about the offensive line, and I think when you got here, that was the group that was maybe behind the other position groups. Um, you know, you did some things with gadget plays and uh, transfers and tried to patch holes, but how has the growth of that unit allowed you to get to the point now where you're talking about opening up the playbook and being able to do some different things that maybe, you know, six, five years ago, you didn't have that option because you couldn't hold the blocks long enough? Well, that's always going to be uh, the goal here is to make gradual improvement uh, you know, up front. And I think uh, the great teams in college football, you know, everybody can get really good skilled players and do a good job, in my opinion, is, is how good are you going to be up front. And uh, those guys don't get a lot of credit, but that's where you win football games. And that's on the offense side and the defense side of the ball. I do think uh, we have developed better depth. We've been able to handle uh, three of our best offensive linemen uh, not being able to play for us and, and, and patch things up. Uh, now we need to continue to build the depth uh, still uh, because it is getting thin and we've now to continue to improve the guys we have and then continue to uh, adjust the roster. But I do think the defensive line, we have gained more depth. Uh, that has helped us. I think that uh, while we have lost George and even Demarcus Mitchell, who were two pro football players, um, you know, we have a nucleus of a lot of guys that have played and uh, – and we're making strides there. So I think that will always be the challenge. And um, whether we play good one year or not, it's going to be the challenge the next year and the next year and the next year. So we, we've got to constantly work hard to um, 
you know, make sure that we're uh, evaluating that every year and making improvements. Any other questions for Coach Tom? You think you'll get Branson Dean back this week? Um, probably not, uh, but I don't want to rule it out, but uh, I'm not optimistic on that one. Were you pleased with how Josh Kaltenberger played? You know what? We were proud of Josh. Uh, he hasn't played a ton of football. Uh, he's gotten in sparingly. And to uh, come in a game where you got to make calls, you got to make the snaps, and you got to block, and, and they, they did a lot of things on defense, a lot of different looks, uh, a lot of different um, dogs and blitzes and coverages and slants and angles up front, and he had to be able to adjust and handle that. I think that uh, he played hard. Um, you know, he'll continue to get better, uh, but he uh, has worked really hard to get to this point. So, fortunately, uh, you know, he came through for us, and, uh, you know, he's got to continue to, to, to get better for us because we're going to need him uh, to play well. It sounds like Aiden's not on campus right now. Is that the case? If so, when will he be back, and is he going to play Saturday? Yeah, he'll, he'll play Saturday, uh, I believe, and uh, he'll, he'll be back here uh, in the next day or two, I believe, when he, when he um, you know, takes care of what he needs to take care of. Anything else? All right, thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks, guys.